Authentication is the process by which your app's users sign up or sign in to your app. The authentication process confirms the legitimacy of a user's identity before allowing them to interact with the application. Thunkable supports authentication through a variety of third parties. In this tutorial, we'll focus specifically on Apple. You will need to have an Apple developer account and connect it to your Thunkable project. We've already taken care of that for the project we'll be working on in this tutorial. Here, on this first screen, we'll give our users the option of how they'd like to access our app. The flow to connect with email or Google has already been built. Together, we'll add the ability for users to sign in with their Apple account. According to Apple's App Store review guidelines, apps that use a third-party or social login service such as Google Sign-In must also offer Sign-In with Apple as an equivalent option. We'll start by adding a button to connect with Apple. Rather than start from scratch, we'll use copy and paste keyboard shortcuts to duplicate this existing button. We'll also duplicate the image component. We want to adhere to Apple's brand guidelines, so we'll be adding the Apple logo to our button and changing the button's background and text colors. Click the existing image, click in the picture field, and upload a new image file or choose from the previously uploaded images. We'll ensure we change the image's name before moving on to modify the button. We'll change the button's text, text color, and border color. Lastly, we'll rename the button to keep our project organized. OK, now let's build out the blocks. Because we're building on a project that has Google and email sign-in options, it already has a stored variable initialized for the selected authentication method. We'll define this variable based on which button the user clicks, Google, email, or Apple. We could copy and paste the when Google button click block and modify it for Apple, but let's build it from scratch. Click the Apple button's name in the component tree and drag the when button click block into the workspace. If the user clicks the Apple button, we'll set the stored variable auth method to Apple. Under App Features, click Sign In, drag the Get Profile from Apple block, and drop it within the When button click block. The mint green blocks represent the available outputs provided by the sign in with Apple process the first time an app's end user signs into an app. Subsequent sign ins will only return the user ID. You are responsible for storing the user ID, authorization code, identity token, and any other information needed to retrieve or update the user's profile information for future sign ins. User ID is a unique identifier assigned to the authenticated user, which can be used to differentiate and identify individual users within the app. This differs from the user's Apple ID for iCloud or the Apple App Store. We'll demonstrate saving the user ID as a variable to use within our app. Click Variables, drag the Initialize Variable block, and drop it in the workspace. Use the drop-down menu to select Stored Variable and give the variable a unique name. Now that the variable is initialized, we'll be able to save an Apple sign-in block's output to it. We'll do that in a moment. You can repeat this flow to initialize as many variables as you think will be useful as you continue to build your app. Given name is the user's first name, family name is their last name, and email address is their email address. But it's important to note that users may use Apple's Hide My Email feature to generate a random email address. We'll initialize another stored variable for the given name so we can use that profile information in our app. The authorization code is a temporary code granted to the app by Apple's authentication system, which the app can exchange for access tokens, allowing it to access the user's data. The identity token is a JSON web token, JWT, that contains user information, such as the user's email address and a unique identifier, which can be used to verify the user's identity. Lastly, if the sign-in process encounters an error, Apple provides an error message with details about what went wrong. If there's an error with signing the user in, we will display the error message in the screen's error label. The else section indicates the actions we want the app to take if there isn't an error. If the Apple sign-in is successful, we'll set the stored variables as the Apple sign-in block's outputs. Click Variables, drag the set variable to block, and drop it in the else section. Drag the corresponding mint green output block and connect it to the set variable to block. Copy and paste the set variable to block. Place it under the other one, Use the drop-down menu to select the other stored variable, and then drag the corresponding mint green output block and connect it. Lastly, when the Apple sign-in is successful, we want to navigate the user into the app. OK, so we've completed the sign-in flow if a user clicks the Apple button, but what if they were to click the Apple logo? We need to duplicate this block combination to account for that. With the sign-in flow complete, let's build the sign-out flow. This app already has a sign-out button that was used for email and Google sign-out. We can configure it for Apple Sign Out as well. Clicking the Sign Out button already triggers different behaviors, depending on whether the auth method variable was set to Google or email. We'll add a third condition for the Apple auth method. Click the If Do Else Blocks gear icon, drag the Else If statement, and drop it between If and Else. 
click the gear icon again. If the stored variable auth method is set to Apple, we need to sign the user out of this account using Apple. The Apple signout process differs from that of Google or email authentication because there isn't a signout from Apple block. To sign an Apple authenticated user out of the app, we'll set the stored variables to null. If you'd like to retain this information for future sessions, before you clear their values, you can choose to save them to a data source. Let's prevent unauthorized access by setting the user details in stored variables to null. We'll also clear auth method variable. Then, we'll navigate the user back to the Connect With screen. To test the Apple sign-in flow, you'll need to either download or publish your app. We've downloaded the app to our device. Let's check it out. The user is prompted to create an account using their Apple ID. And just like that, we've configured authentication through Apple, and our app's users can sign in and out of the app. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and make sure to subscribe to our channel for more great content. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, innovation should have no limits.